Why Taylor McBride Matters. Full show devoted to it today. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard McDonald. I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. We have been over 100,000 of you once again in July. We are breaking records. You are showing up for us six days a week just as we show up for you. So thank you. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, either on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, it's not just me. It is the incredible team over at The Next, at thenexthoops.com. We have over 100 reported pieces every month on women's basketball. We've got a reporter for you in every single WNBA market. So go to thenexthoops.com, subscribe, $9 a month, $72 a year. You can just sign up for free. See the free work we do every day to, com- to cover this great game that we all love. And someone who I've covered since before there even was the next, long before there was the next, is Kayla McBride. And I've been reflecting, honestly, over the last few days after seeing her again on Friday night, do what Kayla McBride does, which is to step up, to do what is necessary for her team to win in what was a Minnesota win over the New York Liberty in New York. I'm I'm a real shocker. She followed it up on Sunday. She and the Lynch, without Nafisa Collier, once again, did it on Sunday, beat the Connecticut Sun at Mohegan Sun. So here in segment one, we're going to talk about Kayla McBride, why she matters, her legacy with the Lynch and beyond. Segment two, we're going to hear from Kayla herself. But I want to start by talking about just a little bit of why Kayla McBride is meaningful. And and the best way I can put it is I've been advocating for women's basketball coverage for a long time. And one of the prime examples I've used for the gap between men's and women's coverage is Kayla McBride. Picture, if you will, a player of McBride's stature and accomplishments on the NBA side. Kayla McBride a star out of school, signs with Notre Dame, plays for Muffet McGraw, excels for Muffet McGraw, becomes a lottery pick of the San Antonio Stars in 2014, immediately an impact player, immediately for Dan Hughes in 2014. How long has she been around? Well, she played for Dan. Dan is retired for now. Come back soon, Dan. We miss you at pregame and postgame. She played with Becky Hammond, the player. She played with Gia Perkins. She played with, prior to Rochester, Shanice Johnson. Jane Appel, she played with. She played with Danielle Adams, and she played with the great artist and center, Kayla Alexander. This is how long she's been around, just as now she is playing with just-named Rookie of the Month, Diamond Miller. And having an impact on her and Dorka Juhas, who has been one of the steals of the draft this year. This is what Kayla McBride's legacy is, in part, why she matters. But a player like that on the NBA side would have been subject to countless profiles. We don't hear much about Kayla McBride. She is consistent. Her career Free throw percentage is 89.5%. 89.5%. Just a remarkable number. It is virtually in the Elena Deladon zone when it comes to free throws. When it comes to her ability to score at all three levels, it's something she's always done well. Her mid-range is deadly. Her ability to get to the rim is and remains a very strong part of her game. And she hits 36.5% of her threes in her career. She's right at that level here this year as well. When she needs to score more, she scores more. That's what she did on Friday night with 26. 
when she needs to be a secondary playmaker, well, she always averages right around three assists per game. Assist percentage is 13-4. And more important, her turnover percentage for her career is 10.7. One of the best numbers in all of WNBA history. I don't mean to overstate it. She's 14th among all players, seventh among active players in turnover percentage. What does that mean? It means she doesn't make mistakes. She's just so fundamentally sound as a guard, as a wing, wherever you put her, wherever you need her, this is what she does. You put her on teams and the teams, they win. Even if they don't have elite talent, they win. You put her on the Las Vegas Aces with Bill Beer, and that team made runs in the WNBA playoffs several years in a row. She went to Minnesota. Minnesota missed the playoffs last year, but back in 2021, they were 22 and 10. I don't know if you remember, that team got off to an 0 and 4 start. An 0 and 4 start. And you say, all right, well, they, they managed to rally. Sylvia Fowles is Sylvia Fowles. And Fisa Collier turned into the player that by and large we've come to know her as. But you know who led that team in minutes played? You know who Cheryl Reeve thought was the most important person to be out there? Carol McBride. This is who she is and this is what she does. And so when I see this Lynch team, and, and nobody had the Lynch as a mid-tier playoff team. I, you know, I, I did not. And there's no slight of Cheryl Reeve, who will go down as the greatest coach in the history of this league. I don't think that's overstating it. And by the way, if they end up, you know, fourth or fifth, how do you not make Cheryl Reeve the coach of the year this year with, you know, with the roster there? I, I think, you know, Latricia Trammell, if Dallas is a top four team, I said, has to be coach of the year. But what if, Minnesota's top 14. I don't know. It, it, it becomes a conversation, just as Tanisha writes in that conversation for me as well. It has to be with Atlanta. Point being, this is a team that is overachieved and is arguably finding another level, even now as Nafisha Collier rallies to come back from an ankle injury. And she'll be back soon and they'll get better. And they'll be a dangerous team come playoff time. But what's the number one reason for that? And one probably not very much talked about. Kayla McBride. Kayla McBride. Fee's got 800 minutes played so far this year. Kayla's at 780. She's going to pass her. And pass her soon. Just the only other two with more than 600 minutes played so far this year are Dorka Juhas and Lindsay Allen. Like, this has been a team that has navigated a lot. A lot. And the reason they're able to do it, you can set your watch to Kayla McBride. That's just the reality of it. So it really matters what Kayla McBride has done, what she is still to do. She's only 31. She is only 31 years old. When you look at where she is in league legacy, that is significant, right? She's made 1,322 attempts from three. Is 16th all time. 17th in made three-point field goals. She'll easily be in the top 10 when it's all said and done. She's 44th in league history in career points. North of 4,000. And again, as I said, that doesn't really capture it. The last time she was in the top 10 in the lead in usage percentage was the 2016 San Antonio Silver Stars. That's an interesting team for another time. So listen, uh, let's hear from Kayla herself. Let's hear from Dorka Yuhas, who had some great things to say about Kayla as well. But I'm just going to urge you all to pay attention to Kayla McBride, because Kayla McBride matters. I'm Howard Magdal, and this is Locked On Women's Basketball.
Locked on women's basketball is brought to you by Ibotta. Look, you're buying stuff anyway here as we're getting ready to go back to school. I know we are in our house. So whether it's picking up burgers and hot dogs for a summer barbecue or getting your kids ready to send them out the door this fall, why not use Ibotta to give you cash back on hundreds of items, whether they're grocery items, to personal care, to pantry goods, you can beat inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link to your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. Now, right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying it. So just go use the code LOCKED. That's L-O-C-K-E-D. When you register, go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta. That's I-B-O-T-T-A app and use the code LOCKED. Again, I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED. Now, without further ado, here's Taylor McBride herself and Dorka Yuhas. Delayed to catch up with them. I'm Howard Magdal, and this is Locked on Women's Basketball. Congratulations on the win. Um, one, one to start with each year in turn. Yeah, just, you know, to be playing without being, I know we talked about it when you came here, we talked about it's about trying to find ways to win, it's not about getting every last shot, but we know what's in your bed. We know that you're capable of coming out and doing this. In your mind, is it, I'm going to need to score more tonight? Are you looking for that uh, a little bit more? Um, you know, I, I, like, like you said, I know that I'm capable. Um, obviously, she's been having an amazing season, but when somebody like that goes out, um, and everything that she brings to the table is just bringing our toughness and our level of competition up because she does do so much for us on offense and the defense side of the ball. So for me, it's about finding the right times to be aggressive on the offensive end, but also just bringing the toughness in the overall game so that everybody is lifted up. Because like I said, Fee isn't just, you can't just replace her with one person. Like you said, like, yeah, I scored whatever, but it was like a whole toughness as a group that really brought the, brought the win. And that's what I was most proud of. And Georgia, just, you know, Cheryl talked about a couple of things. Number one, about your fearlessness that you've taken, you know, directly from college and as you're in your rookie season. And also just giving you the assignment of, all right, you're going to Stewie tonight. So take me through, you hear that in that moment. Well, how are you processing it? You know, how did you utilize your fearlessness in that moment? Well, it's, you know, I feel like since my, this whole rookie year, I, I feel like I've been put into a lot of challenging matchups, you know, guarding bigger post players, back-to-back -back post players, and obviously guarding Sue is a whole different thing, you know? I mean, she's just, she's a post, but she's a guard. She can do everything. So obviously, you know, as, you know, growing up, always watching her playing, you know, also at UConn, but also overseas uh, with Fanet, you know, just, it, she's an amazing player. So obviously just getting this assignment was, you know, it's it's definitely like a tough matchup for me, but I, I definitely wanted to, you know, just kind of embrace it because I feel like these are the games when I can really, you know, just challenge myself and get better. Um, and, you know, it's always good that if, if a coach gives you an assignment, you know, as a as a young player, like go guard Stewie, you know, but I think it was overall, obviously a team effort. I think we did a great job of, you know, whenever we say somebody else was up there and um, we made it a little bit tougher for her, but I mean, She's still going to make tough shots. Uh, that's what, you know, the greatest players do. But it's obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun thing for me. Just and it challenges me to get better and better every single day. So I'm very grateful for that. Michael, first question for you. Just, I don't remember what quarter it was, first quarter, second quarter. When you hit the hop step three while like, you're turning, did, did you know at that point you were out on the Man, I've been missing so many threes. And um, just like normal threes, like normal flow threes over the last maybe six, seven games. Um, and I've been working with Coach Katie Smith, um, just getting my reps up, trying to find, we do this drill called ECAT where you have to kind of make one in a row all the way around back and two and three and four without missing two in a row. So I'll literally go and make four in a row all the way around and have to come back without missing two in a row. So just doing stuff like that, it kind of, kind of gets you back in the rhythm of the thing of, of the game. Um, but I knew that I had to be aggressive from the jump. So obviously I made my first one off something that was super simple. I was really just trying to get the ball up. But when, you know, when I do stuff like that, I know that I'm feeling the game and the flow of the game. Um, and it's just fun at that point, you know, like I can't explain it as a shooter, um, 
when you see the first one go in, the, the rim immediately gets a little bit bigger. And it's almost like, you know, just throwing the ball in the ocean. So it's fun for me, you know, I love the challenge of it, um, but I believe in law of averages and I know that I'm a great three point shooter. So just continue to shoot my way through it. Um, but yeah, it's good to feel good out there, especially with shots like that. It's fun. Once you see the rim bigger, once, once you know that you're feeling good, like your arms are on the same together. And like you said, you're feeling better with that. Yeah. Does, 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 that sort, does that sort of, you know, pick you up in terms of the cotton in terms of the coming off the screens? Just well, yeah, I mean, because the defense changes. So uh, beginning of the second half, I they brought Willoughby out, and she was just kind of on me. So one of the first things I called was a burn, which is uh, something that me and me and LA call together, and just to get a back door, something easy, just to release that pressure, because I knew that they were getting me up a little bit more. I hit some tough shots, whatever. Um, but I've been in the league long enough to understand that, like, I don't have to force anything. So just taking what the defense gives me, uh, making the right play, uh, and letting the game really come to me, that's when it's best that's when it's fun you know because you're really just reading and every read is a little bit different every defender is a little bit different so just take what they give me and um just doing whatever i can to help, our, help our team win and then jordan just wanted to ask you know i know that uh, your position they're taking the team they fully healthy but they want to play at sunday but you know starting tonight and uh next week how much has the fact that you've recently played you've had ohio state playing four next to you you know a similar coach much of that help you just manage yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just growing up, I always be more comfortable at the four. Um, I always felt like that's more close to what I can do with my versatility. So it wasn't really necessary hard today to come in. Obviously, just guarding the four is obviously the league is a little bit different than, you know, in college. Uh, just, <laughs> you know, literally pose that are guards, you know, impose bodies, but they can do whatever. So, um, you know, I felt comfortable with it because I, I feel like that's what I've been playing, you know, in college. But before that, at overseas, and I felt like most of the times, like playing the center is a little bit more challenging, you know, just kind of when you go against bigger, stronger post players, kind of trying to find a way to guard them. And, you know, it's it's definitely, it's that's that's for me in the future, that's going to be my goal to be able to do both, kind of mismatch whenever they need me at the four, then at the four, whenever they need me at the five. But it's a learning moment, and I definitely want to just keep working on that versatility of being able to guard, but also just you know, get some buckets from the four as well. We're going to head to the Zoom. Let's start off with Kent. Uh, hey, this, this question is for uh, for Kayla. Coach talked a lot about how much you've embraced the rookies this year, enjoyed playing with them, and kind of helped bring them along. Um, I mean, you look at the games that both these rookies had today, you have to feel kind of proud. And I'd like to ask both of you your thoughts when Diamond not only took that shot, that three, but made that three. You yeah, know, I've been I've been extremely impressed. And uh, they asked me after our last game, I've been extremely impressed with our rookies um, because they came in ready to compete and eager to learn, eager to listen, but just the willingness to compete. Like this league is hard and it's even harder coming in as a rookie um, from different programs all over. You know, you know how that goes. Like it's hard to stick in this league. And I think that they really embrace the challenge to find their way. And uh, as a vet, like I know what that learning curve is like. I know what it's like going up against players. Um, for the first time and having to adjust and all the, you have to really adjust your game when you get to the pro level. So just being able to be somebody that's a positive affirmation for them and just helping them work through it because I don't want to take away any part of who they are or what they bring to the table, but just helping them magnify what they can really do for this league, especially for our team, um, is, is what my job is as a vet because I do, I have had enough experience where I feel like they, they'll listen to me and they have confidence in the things that I say, but I also want to allow them to be themselves, you know, and play through their mistakes and, and figure that out because like I said, when you have two rookies like them who come in that just want to win and compete, the rest of it takes care of itself. So I've been really impressed. Um, and like, and for, to follow the follow up question, I knew, I knew as soon as they left Diamond's hands that it was going in. But um, she's just fearless. They both are. They're very fearless, and um, I think that that's all you can really ask for if for rookies, you know, because they're gonna have learning curves. They're gonna have days, good days, bad days. But when they're willing to compete and be fearless in the competition that this league brings, that's that's the epitome of what I believe uh, good rookies are and somebody who can really last in this league. Um, go with Frank. Frank. Yep. Gotcha, sorry. Um, you know, just what does this win mean to you guys? I mean, obviously New York uh, came in tonight, I think the second best record in the league. Uh, I think now they're tied with Connecticut, but just kind of as you go on here to get a win like this, 
with, you know, the injuries you guys have had, what does this do for kind of the confidence level? I mean, it's huge. Um, like, like you said, they're one of the, the best teams in the league. Um, and, you know, I think so far in the season, we've um, beat the teams that were under 500. And I think that moving forward, as we continue to grow as a, as a group, we want to be able to compete with the teams maybe a little bit above us. And that's something that builds confidence, builds trust, it builds cohesion, um, and just a confidence, you know, because the players are great. The teams are great, um, especially at the top part of the league. Um, but we want to we want to be on that level eventually. And I think that by getting wins like this and being able to compete, not only um, physically, but just like as a unit, you know, it was just it was such a team effort. Like, yeah, people have their moments and stuff, but it was everybody collectively we believe we can win the game. And I think that that's something that you might not have seen a month or two ago. And even without fee, like if you add fee to the mix, that's a whole nother story. So we know what we're building as a group internally. Um, and I think today was just like, a solidified thing of like, yes, we're moving in the right direction. Um, you know, we haven't won a championship or anything like that. So we know we're going to move on to the next, but this was a big, a big moment for us as a group. Thanks. And so Lila. Uh, Dorka, you know, this is your second double double of the, you know, last four games after getting the first of your career a little over a week ago, just, you know, what's been working for you just in terms of, you know, finding your groove and comfortability, you know, at this point in the season? Um, I mean, I, I think for me, it's just kind of like that mindset of, you know, just go get grabbing rebounds. You know, I felt like maybe in the beginning of the season, I kind of just, you know, maybe box out, wait around for somebody to go grab it. So I definitely took much pride in these past games of, you know, especially in the old boards, like get some extra possessions for us. That's always been like kind of a, a focus for me just to make sure that, you know, we got some extra possessions and especially if you go against, you know, um, teams at the top you know I think these always count so that's I think going forward that's going to be always my focus just to make sure I get rebounds and you know box out and then do whatever and obviously the offense comes with that sometimes with the off you know old boards but um, going forward that's just going to be my identity and I have to hold myself accountable and I think you know the coaches are holding myself me accountable for that you know just telling me to be greedy um, go get grab some rebounds so that's that's just gonna be you know who I am from going from now on and hopefully you know for my future and you know just to follow up having these next two games against the sun I mean what are the emotions and excitement for you just to go back to Connecticut for the you know first time having those first games as a pro oh I'm super excited you know I I've got a lot of a lot of messages already that you know people from college times, days they're coming to support me, you know, just bringing their families, friends, you know, a couple of my teammates are able to make it. Most of my teammates from college are back home now, but whoever is at UConn right now, they're going to come and, and watch me play. So I'm super excited. Um, hopefully you're going to be able to see Jonathan's too, both of them. So this it's there's a set up a, a play date tomorrow. So Fingers crossed every, everything is going to work out, but um, it, it means a lot. You know, I'm, I'm super excited. Hopefully I have some time to go back to campus and just say hi to everybody. Go Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And last, Cut this certainly out. not least, Jack. <laughs> Whatever. I, I like that, K-Mac. Um, you know. <laughs> um, K-Mac, for you, with, with the Liberty started on a 15 five run and then you you guys punch back and then again the 14-0 run the fourth quarter and you guys weathered the storm there just mm -hmm. especially without fee um you know players are, are looking at you for for guidance in those moments just what what's the most important things that, that you're telling everybody in those two moments I mean in the first quarter it was a little bit different than in the fourth quarter so in the for first sure. quarter, I'm sure. like pick it up you know what I'm saying because you know against a team like that you don't want to start off the game like that. I was proud of us how we bounced back. But in the fourth quarter, when they're when they're coming back like that, it was really just don't panic. You know, we I felt like we had did enough throughout the game that we deserved to win the game. So go out and take the game because, I, like I said, when you're playing against teams like this, teams that championship contending team, they're they're gonna do that. You know, so not to panic, continue to be aggressive and be passionate about what we're doing and have that toughness. But don't panic. You know, like. Yes, they made shots. Yes, whatever. All the craziness of the game up and down. But I've been really proud of our, like, even killedness, you know, especially from our rookies. Like, it's it's actually, like, kind of unheard of to have rookies come in and just kind of be able to work with the storm. So to be able to be that vet on the court um, and just kind of give them that calm <laughs> demeanor because, you know, like I said, 
teams are gonna go on runs, things like that. So it looked a little different in the first quarter, but in the fourth quarter, it was just about not panicking, knowing that we deserve to win the game. So go and finish it, take the game back. And then for either one of you, just with Diamond being a rookie and the way that she plays and that she'll score, she'll impact the game, however she impacts the game, lets everybody know about it, and, and then hits a shot like that in the fourth quarter, just how much confidence does someone like that give the entire team in a game like this when, you know, you need everybody to step up and help without fee? You want me to take it or you got it? You Okay. Um, like I said, it's just a fearlessness. Um, and I think it's contagious. I think her energy and her effort and just her willingness to compete. Like I said, I think our rookies have just come in and they just compete their asses off. And that, that's just as much energy and effort a, as anything else. So um, with Diamond specifically, I think just her energy and her willingness, to just kind of put her body on the line, put herself on the line um, and take those shots, want the ball and shoot them free throws and things like that. That's that gives everybody else the confidence and go, OK, like, you know, and then she does make she makes the free throw. She makes that huge three uh, when they were on a run. Um, all those things, they add up, you know, and like I said, I think it's just the fearlessness and the confidence. And she's she's, you know, she's out there. She's just, they're just gritty. You know, they're gritty plays. They're plays where they're not. They're like the dirty ones, you know, and I think that um, that just comes with with her. The chip that she has on her shoulder, both of them that they brought um, coming into the league. And like I said, I think it's contagious. Thank you both. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Thank you. Any more That's questions? Go ahead. Right. Thank, Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Your boy has my bedtime. Well, that's it for Lockdown Women's Basketball. Thank you for listening and watching. As always, we'll be back with you tomorrow. The great Jasmine Thomas of the Los Angeles Sparks joins the program. Very excited to have her on. Excited to catch up on everything that's going on in her world. Until then, I'm Howard McDowell wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. Welcome to Wallet. For the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball.